Hello, my nickname is Mayon, and uh, well, first of all, all my channel is in Spanish. Uh, English is not my mother language, so I'm sorry if uh, it's difficult to understand eventually my English. Uh, but uh, well, I will do my best uh, for you to understand. But we are going to talk about what's wrong with the Rodcaster Pro. Well, basically, Rodcaster Pro is a, um, well, I don't know if you call them mixer of a um, specialized for podcasting. And basically, that is the main problem. I mean, or all the problems came from that source, which is this equipment is made for podcasting. And when I said podcasting, I meant basically having one up to four people uh, locally, okay, and recording in the same equipment without the need of any other mm, recording tool or what well, basically that. And for uh, and you have the option of the sound pad, so you can create sounds and make things noises. <laughs> It's magic just by pressing a button. So, uh, well, for if you do that and only that, this is a great agreement. Okay. Uh, of course, you can enter, let's say, a conversation through, I don't know, Zoom or Meet or whatever they video conference program of your like through the USB. And you have mix minus in the USB, which is very important for podcasting. Because the other way around, the Skype, the person in Skype or Zoom or wherever, will receive their own uh, sound if there is not mix minus configuration. And I know that uh, Skype, Zoom, and many other programs has an algorithm to remove the sound which is being sent. I mean, if I send something to the mixer and I send it back, those programs has the algorithm to delete that uh, sound. But uh, you know what happens with AI and algorithms. It works or not, or not all the time, okay? So mix minus is a good idea. Apart of that, you have the possibility to uh, have two person on the phone, one through Bluetooth, one through TRRS cable. And uh, well, uh, just imagine you can have, for example, four people on the mics, two on the telephones, that makes six, and uh, many people on a Zoom, uh, I mean, interviewing through Zoom and generate from that a podcast. It's good matching for that. But the problem starts when you need something more. For example, if you are a game streamer, okay, you will have a PC to stream, okay, the audio and the video, and another PC for the game. That is very, very common. So uh, you need to enter the audio from the PC, the gaming PC, into the mixer before send it to the PC, with, which is going to broadcast, right? So, um, well, there is a need of uh, more inputs in the mixer. If we see the mixer, Well, all you have is the four uh, XLR and look, it's not an hybrid XLR which come with a plug, uh, six, a quarter inch plug. It's just pure XLR. So you have four mics uh, to enter and you have the TRS, okay, to enter and you have the USB to enter, basically. Uh, well, of course, you can buy one of those, which is a conversor 
from XLR to micro jack, okay, mini jack, 3.5 millimeters or 1/8 inch. So you can plug this in and you will have another uh, input for your sound. But this one has a uh, trouble. First of all, you should buy this one. The one saying PXLR Plus is important because the plus means that will convert the 48 volts phantom power from here to the 3. Point, no, sorry, 1. Point volt, 1. 1.5 volt needed in this kind of uh, connector. So if you don't uh, do that, for example, you buy the one saying BXLR without the plus, that conversion is not made and you can harm, for sure you will, harm your PC or mobile phone or whatever you plug in here because it's receiving 48 volts when they expecting 1.5 volts. So you need this one. This one costs around 20 euros, 20 dollars, whatever. Okay? So it's quite expensive, right? So that, that's one way to do that. But apart of that, these connectors, okay, are prepared for microphones. So they, the preamps rise a lot, the sound or the signal coming in here. And this connector has 10 plus 10 dBs. So it's a very high um, sound. Even if you low the volume, the output volume in the PC or telephone to the minimum, and you uh, set up the XLR for a very, very low volume, will distort the signal and the sound will sound basically crappy, right? So to avoid that, you need one of those, which is a, a direct injection box. How this works? Well, you have two XLRs, because it's basically this is for st stereo solutions. You will connect every single one of those to, do, to two uh, XLR uh, inputs here, so from here to here, and then enter the signal from the PC for the left and right channels. Okay, what this do? Basically, what this does is um, lowering the impedance in order to make the signal from the PC on those uh, quarter inch connectors to be compatible with the mic level, lowering the signal. For example, this one can lower the signal 0 dB, 20 dB, or 40 dB. So 40 dB will be usually the, the way will work, okay? So the this, this direct injection, this is a very cheap one, cost you 20 euros, and you need it if you want to connect your gaming PC into the uh, Rodcaster Pro. So you have this one solves, this one solves the problem of giving 48 volts to the PC and lowering the signal. This one only solves the problem of uh, lowering the uh, power from 48 volt to 1.5 uh, volts. And if you use the BX, BXLR without the, pl the plus, well, you don't solve any problem. You only make the connection and you can burn your PC. So basically that's the main problem of this equipment. You cannot, uh, you don't have enough inputs. I mean, on line level, you don't have line level inputs. And of course you don't have line level, no, not line level, in, uh, instrument level inputs. You cannot plug in here a guitar or a bass, uh, electronic bass. To do that, again, you need the uh, direct injection box. 
this one or one uh, expensive. I mean, there are the, the, the range goes. This one is twenty, okay, but uh, a good one could be around hundred or hundred fifty euros or dollars. So that's basically the problem, okay? Inputs and now outputs. How many outputs these have? Well, basically you have those four, which is uh, for the uh, headsets or the headphone headsets. Sorry, uh, this one going to the PA, to the speakers, uh, the USB is output to, okay, and that's all. So the USB usually is for the PC. For example, something we do in WinTablet, uh, my other channel, is to send the signal, I mean, of course, uh, to Stringer through the USB, because we met in Stringer and we run a direct show in YouTube and then we take the audio from there and place it into a podcast. It's exactly the same Joe Rogan is doing, okay? He runs a live show and then get the audio for the podcast. We do the same, but the problem is that even, I mean, although we can do that, we want to send the audio to a specific uh, application called BUTT, which makes help you to make a live broadcasting like a internet radio. Okay, so while we are running the show in YouTube, at the same time you can listen the show only audio, of course, in a radio, and to send uh, the audio for the radio, all I have is this kind of cables or quart from quarter inch to uh, one eighth this one one eighth of of 3.5 millimeters so i need to plug this on the for example three okay on the headset three and then this to the pc we are using to broadcast into the radio the problem is you can find out that trying to record that audio into Audacity or whatever is those four exits output. Sorry, those four outputs are very noisy. Noisy, yeah. So the first thing I need to do is take the audio from here and go through a well something to delete that uh, that uh, noise. Okay, so. Mm, and the same thing happens basically with the TRS. Okay, if you try to use it as an output, uh, well, basically mm, it's noisy. The headset in front, the the machine. Okay, uh, you have an corresponding to the, the to the one. You have one in front only in one eighth uh, inch. Well, it's noisy too. And even those two, the one going to the speakers, I they are better quality, but uh, I mean, not absolutely great, okay? So that's the second problem, basically, on this machine. You have few inputs, or input only for the micro mics, and you have few output, and the output are for headsets. So, uh, well, Whenever you need to have two PCs or two output to send your uh, audio to two places, let's say, for example, the PA for the public, and uh, you want to have a, a speaker, a monitor, for example, for, for, for the technician, you need to take the mm, signal from here, and the monitor will be uh, quite noisy. So, well, that is basically the problem with Rodcaster Pro. When as soon as you basically want to do more than just sharing the equipment for four uh, person, speaking on mics, uh, you become into trouble because the lack of inputs and outputs, and that's basically the problem. Uh, well. 
and of course if you want to connect uh, instruments and uh, even another PC you need to buy uh, direct injection boxes or expensive uh, connectors or what whatever so that's the problem it's a great machine for what is what designed and only for what is what designed if you want to try something else like i don't know use it for game streaming or use it for i don't know musicians you and your guitar what you will need to start buying things and stuff and connecting and being uh, aware that um, you could become into trouble uh while connecting things on here, right? And uh, something I need to mention is uh, eventually this machine has improved the uh, well the the way it connects to the PC. In the very beginning, the uh, way you set up your voice, etc., was very basic, Bas saying, "Okay, my voice is." Um, very strong, soft, or whatever, and that was corrected by the, the machine. But in a second, in the firmware, uh, the second firmware they, uh, the second firmware they issue, well, you can change that, and you have more fine tuning of the effects. Even if you, uh, well, you see it on this uh, app, okay, which is the Rodcaster Pro effects and uh, well you have here the app to load the, the pads the song pad and the one for, to download the podcast well you know what the problem is with the, when you mm, use a uh, multi-track and you then need to download which is takes a uh, long because uh, it converts the the, the, the the type of uh file uh, in the I think in the broadcast and takes forever but anyway it works and here you have the configuration for your mics okay and the main aux the the, the speaker out or what well, the mix out uh, that you can fine tune again I mean taking the gain 7 dBs up and etc but the question is uh, when you do that well, since you have this then the people become into trouble because they don't really know how to do this so if you know how to do it how to use all this is great because uh, that will improve but if it's not it's difficult so the first release was without all this stuff and anyway, you can click on here, Effects Edit Mode, and this will disappear. So you can now uh, use it as the first uh, release. I mean, in only soft, hard, and medium voices, and that, that's all. Or you can uh, set up Effects Edit Mode and use it uh, with the threshold, ratio, attack, release, etc. for the compressor, the deezer, the noise gate, which works perfectly, and the high pass filter. Well, and the, the, here you have the Apex, uh, but I, I, I don't use the oral exciter because I, I don't know how it sounds. But anyway, another problem is, uh, in this case, how you connect, I mean, the driver you use, the driver you use is another problem because uh, this machine has no ACO drivers and that made difficult to be used with many, many programs like DO, I mean, the, 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 to record like Reaper, Audition, etc. And uh, it's very difficult to use it with... Uh, the BST host, for example, Carla or Cantabile, uh, in order to, for example, put a reverb and a delay on your voice while singing, for example, which is not, I mean, are not effects in the 
Roadcaster Pro. So if you want to connect Cantabile with uh, your ra Roadcaster, it will be a nightmare, including using ACO for all, which is a driver, generic ACO driver, which is uh, horrible. And uh, horrible, I mean, in, in terms of uh, difficult to use and difficult to configure, and eventually you get like that just because of your buffering and many, many parameters. So uh, not having a real ACO driver on the Rodcaster Pro is a pity. And I think they will eventually, with some firmware, they will include a, an ACO compatible driver, but uh, today it's not. So again, we are going, if you are an advanced user and you want to do things, more things that what the Rodcaster is prepared for, you went into trouble. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Sorry about my English. And uh, well, I expect uh, your comments and uh, just be polite, okay? I mean, you can argue and you can say whatever you want, but just be polite. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.